You're listening to the St. John's Diamond Creek Podcast. This episode presented by Associate Minister Joel Snipson. The reading today is Psalm 138. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. For you have so exalted your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame. When I called, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. May all the kings of the earth praise you, Lord, when they hear what you have decreed. May they sing of the ways of the Lord for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he looks kindly on the lowly. Though lofty, he sees them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. The Lord will vindicate me. Your love, Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So it's week one of the footy finals, and I know some of you are pumped and some of you have completely checked out depending on your team's success or lack of. See, what happens when an AFL team is winning? The club's supporters jump on the bandwagon. They're all in. They're praising. They're delighting. They're boasting about the team making known to everyone the team's greatness. And the language of the success is us, as if we did it from the sidelines. But as soon as a team's form drops off, I won't mention any clubs like Richmond, (laughs) but with the change of circumstances so quickly, praise descends to members' outrage and cheers of support turns to boos for bad performances. The packed crowds become half-hearted and thin out while keyboard warriors ramp up targeting players or the coach. And the supporters' language shifts from us to them as many jump off the bandwagon. And just like fickle supporters of a declining footy team, at times our praise in God can also be fleeting depending on our circumstances or half-hearted as we put our trust elsewhere. And today in our series, Praying the Psalms, we're in Psalm 138, which is a wonderful psalm of praise where David shows us a better way of praise that is personal, public, and persistent. Well, like in Psalm 103 last week, praise is personal. How did How was Dave's praise personal? Well, it was wholehearted. Look to verse 1. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. See, unlike the half-hearted crowds of a declining football team, David's response was all in. Notice his repeated praise, and it's personal. I will praise you. I will sing your praise. Praise your name. This is unrestrained, uncontained enthusiasm towards God. His praise with all my heart actually picks up key Old Testament ideas that Jesus also mentions from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. See, this wholehearted love involves every aspect of our being. It's all in involving our emotions, our intellect, our will, our physical bodies too. David's praise involves his whole body bowing down to God. And David's wholehearted praise is also exclusively set on the Lord. Notice in verse 1, David sings praise before the small g gods. And in verse 2, he turns away from them to bow down towards the Lord's holy temple. These gods of the nations include their powerful kings and their different idols that they worship. 
Yet David's song of praise is exclusively focused on the temple, which is all about entering God's glorious presence. See, so easily our praise isn't exclusive, but it's divided. What are the small g gods in this world are our hearts prone to gravitating to? What good things in life can distract our focus away from the Lord? See, when it comes to worshipping God, the Aussie way is don't get all carried away, right? Aussies are suspicious of those happy clappers, calm down. It's only acceptable to get all in excited at the footy when your team's winning. And also, we're pretty relaxed in our worship style here at St. John's, but times we can risk being half-hearted and take God's presence for granted. In services, we can kind of listen while responding to that text message, maybe keeping an eye on the footy scores, maybe holding back singing because I really don't like that song or I'm just not feeling it today. But elsewhere, in 2 Samuel chapter 6, again with David, there was this Ark of the Covenant, which was where God's presence was before the temple. And finally, it was brought home into Jerusalem. And David praised God. He was dancing and he was singing with all of his might. But his wife, Michal, she didn't like it. And in fact, she criticized him. You made a fool of yourself dancing half naked in front of the girls over here, as if he's drunk and at the pub and making a scene. But David's praise was all in. He was responding to the Lord's presence with them. And he said to her, I will celebrate before the Lord. I will become even more undignified than this. Friends, we are made for a single purpose to praise and glorify God, that's it. The problem is, from the beginning of the Bible, is that sin undermines this exclusive and wholehearted thankfulness and trust in God. So we seek glory elsewhere. We are the most authentically human and experience the deepest joy when our praise isn't found in our temporary circumstances, but in the presence of our Lord. And back to verse 2, we see the reason of David's praise. For your unfailing love and your faithfulness. See, and David's praise came from experiencing God's unfailing love and faithfulness personally in his life. Look to verse 3. When I called, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. David's song here is intensely personal. We don't know the specifics of his situation. In verse 7, he faced some sort of trouble. And the Lord delivered him in a very real and specific way. And for David, it was like this light bulb moment where his intellectual understanding and his personal experience of God comes together as the Lord answers his prayers. And notice how David's experience of salvation changes him. Verse 3, he's now emboldened. He now has this supercharged trust in the Lord, causing him to praise. At Sunday at 6, we recently had a confirmation and baptism service. And we heard wonderful testimonies from a diverse group of people from different ages and backgrounds, boldly sharing how knowing Jesus had been real for them. Like Shiloh how Jesus had been there by her side and she had to share it in show and tell in grade two. Or Charlie in the midst of challenges and change and significant friendships. Or Emily encountering a church that prays together. Or Elijah, how Jesus has been like his coach. Or Eli growing closer to God amongst our St. John's community. Or for Adair, experiencing God's faithfulness in Nigeria and coming here to Australia. Or Lockie, wrestling with the Bible in times of doubt. Or for Beth, God using her daily walks to draw her to this place. See, with each of them, we heard unique stories of God's grace, yet they all had a common thread for encountering God's faithfulness in knowing Jesus. And secondly, praise is public. See, in our Western secular society, 
there's been a privatization of faith. This is the idea that your faith is uniquely a private thing, so keep it to yourself. This is promoted in political rhetoric and in schools and in HR workplace policies and training. Effectively, you worship who you want, but mind your damn business about what other people do or don't worship. But it's interesting that Gen Z are now reacting against this spiritual privatization and are wanting answers and wanting to discuss what has been labeled taboo. See, David's praise, while personal, it wasn't private, but public. Look to verse 4. May all the kings of the earth praise you, Lord, when they hear what you have decreed. David's praise publicly invites these kings and powerful among the nations to join his praise. And in verses 2 and 4, you'll notice this stuff about decrees. This refers to God's word and how God had faithfully kept his promises, saving Israel, despite their half-hearted worship. And the kings of these surrounding nations had been watching on. They saw how the one true Lord fulfilled his word and graciously saved this undeserving Israel time again. And David's praise boldly dared to believe that these nations witnessing the Lord's salvation would join his praise. David so confident as if it's certain. Well, likewise, our salvation ultimately isn't for our sake, but to make Jesus known before a watching world. Friends, our praise in Jesus isn't something only for us to privately enjoy, but great hope for your searching colleague or struggling neighbour or interested classmate. At the recent confirmation and baptism testimonies, while they were uniquely personal, it was very public praise. The church was packed with friends and family, many of whom don't normally attend church, witnessing them publicly decide to follow Jesus, and they were also invited to encounter Jesus' offer of salvation for themselves. While the gift of salvation in Jesus starts with personal experience, it's not private. God is building his new community with a shared calling of this all-in praise. See, left to ourselves, so easily our praise becomes half-hearted and we're tossed about by life circumstances. We need each other to keep trusting and praising Jesus. But look, most people are happy if we do all the religious stuff here in this designated religious space. They say, you do your thing, that's fine. But when things get risky is when we get public with our faith out there in the community. Just revealing some of my colours now, I'm a Lions supporter. I'm not a bandwagon one, by the way. I was there 23 years ago in 2001 in our first of three premierships. And as a supporter and as a Christian, one player still stands out to me, Sean Hart. He was this short rover, he wasn't a star, but he did all those little 1% of things that led to the club's success. And in the 2001 grand final win over Essendon, he won the Norm Smith medal. Check out this clip. Well, that's, that's, oh, I don't know what to say. Everyone who knows me as a Christian, the first person I want to thank my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. After that, I want to thank my wonderful teammates, the Brisbane Lions footy club and all involved, and my beautiful wife, Linda, and my two boys, Jesse and Ricky, I'm sitting at home. Thanks, guys. Would you do that? While his teammates reveled in their glory, Sean publicly glorified Jesus. Public, all in praise before a watching world. And his witness was backed up by his selfless play on field. In, in many interviews, he shared how there's more to life than footy and how his faith shaped his footy. And while most of us don't have the public platform of an AFL player, how can we publicly praise? I know it can be complex and risky. We need to earn people's trust. We need to be discerning of how we share and not use Christian jargon. 
Yet as David praised and danced, he was so exclusively focused on the Lord, he didn't water down his praise for other people's expectations or their approval. All in praise has to overflow publicly in some way. However you're in the community, how can you take one step in your praise becoming public in some way? Maybe with that friend, sharing how your faith helps you in challenges in your studies or work or as a parent. Maybe sharing personal experiences of answered prayer and offering to pray for their difficult situation. Maybe at school or work, not joining in the toxic gossip, but going against the grain, showing Jesus' integrity and grace when it's tough. As you're responding to the Lord's salvation, David's praise was personal and public from subjective experience, but also objective truth. While David's praise was from intensely personal experiences of the Lord answering him when he was down and out, His praise was also grounded in God's love and faithfulness shown in his word and demonstrated in history. The nations there witnessing the Lord keep his word and save his people time again. Like David, while our praise must include personal experience of Jesus meeting us in our story of brokenness and sin, our praise can't only be subjective. It must also be grounded in God's objective saving work. See, if our faith is only about our experiences, like the fickle footy crowds, our praise will drop off when life gets tough. If our praise is only about our personal experiences of God, it's not relevant for other people. Yet turning to the personal work of Jesus, who has objectively good news for every person everywhere. While David's praise was focused on the temple, the earthly place where God's presence was with them, in Jesus, God's presence is no longer found in a place, but a person. Jesus, the God-man, who objectively and historically entered our world and shown his love and faithfulness by sacrificing himself to bring us salvation and create his new community. David's praise was personal and public from experience and God's word and saving work. And what was the result? This let David's praise led him to have this bigger vision of the Lord. In verses 5 and 6, he's completely captured by the Lord's glory and greatness. Friends, all in praise changes us. It helps us to better see and be amazed by God's bigness, and we rightly see our circumstances as smaller. And thirdly, our praise is persistent. While the fleeting crowds of the out-of-form footy team jump off the bandwagon in the tough times, David praise isn't dependent on his circumstances, but persists even through the trouble. Look to verse 7. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. See, the wonderful thing about knowing Jesus is that he graciously meets us in all circumstances of life, including the really painful stuff. Jesus not only sees our pain from afar, but he draws close to our brokenness. He understands that sometimes praising him feels impossible. And recently, Dell preached a lament Psalm 42, giving us permission to be raw with God. Worship the cries out in the trouble and brings all our fears and pain to him, asking, why, Lord? How long, Lord? Otherwise, we believe in suffering that God is just up and left and we can shut God out and turn to other small g gods. David's persistence in praise knows that the presence of trouble doesn't mean the absence of the Lord. He has bold trust the Lord is still with him. See, when we're in the trouble, often our cry is, God, help me, get me out of this situation. And often our prayer is to get me around the situation. And like with David here, sometimes God graciously does. He gets us around the trouble. But often the Lord's answer is, I'll go through the trouble with you. 
his mighty hand carrying us through the pain instead. See, notice in verses 7 and 8, David confidently sings about the Lord's hand who actively continues to deliver him. So persistent praise is all about our trust. See, in our relationships, including with God, I think we have a trust tank. This tank is filled up a little when someone say they will do something and they do it, whether it's the dishes or or meeting that deadline or kicking straight in a final. But the tank levels do also go down every time trust is broken, when they don't keep their word. And look, hopefully we believe people can grow. But often, a good predictor of trustworthiness is their past trustworthiness. Has he or she come through before factor? Well, in verses 3 and 7, David, having experienced the Lord's deliverance in the past, greatly emboldened his trust in the present. And in verse 8, David's praise then shifts focus to his future, singing, the Lord will vindicate me. Persistent praise enlarges David's vision, reminding him that his trust tank with God is completely full, it's overflowing. He recalls a clear pattern of God's faithfulness in every situation when he was threatened. The Lord had faithfully come through before and will continue to in uncertain times ahead. How's your trust tank with Jesus right now? Are you struggling to trust God with something overwhelming now or uncertain ahead? But think back to past difficult moments on your journey. How can you see God's loving and faithful hands in your life? See, sometimes we need the hindsight to see his grace at work. Consider the doors the Lord opened and closed. Praise God for how the Lord didn't answer your prayers as you wanted. Praise God for the unlikely provision and people he graciously put alongside you at the perfect moment. What impossible situations has God got you through in the past? Let this embolden your trust that he's got your back now and into the future. Maybe not getting you around the trouble, but his glorious presence meeting you in it. Persistent praise, see the Lord's faithful track record. Look, maybe you're not yet a follower of Jesus, or your path has been full of relentless trouble where God has felt distant or seemingly are not answering our prayers time again. Well, David's praise, yes, involved experience, but it was also based on objective trust in God's saving work. Friends, if nothing else, we have a reason to praise, hang your hat on the gospel. Jesus is God's track record of unfailing love and faithfulness to us in the trouble. Turning to Jesus, we experience objective, historical and trustworthy evidence that the Lord has come through before and will continue to. And while David could not yet see it, his song of praise points forward to Jesus' saving presence. Verse 7, we see the cross. You stretch your hand out against the anger of my foes. Your right hand saved me from Satan, sin and death. Verse 8, we see the glorious resurrection. The Lord will vindicate me. Your love, Lord, endures forever. Because of Jesus' saving work, he can be completely trusted, so persist praising him. And let's turn from those small g gods and praise only on the good days and turn towards the glory of Jesus. May our praise be personal, wholehearted, all in. May our praise be public, saved before a watching world to also join our song. And may our praise be persistent. Trusting God by seeing his faithfulness in the past and ultimately found in Jesus. Amen. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to subscribe to this podcast, you can do so in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Just search for St. John's Diamond Creek. 